So today's subject, what we are going to talk for the next one hour is on factors influencing syncretism in sculptures. And so the objective of this is to uh, analyze and give an overview of syncretism as well as sculptures. To set the context, we presume that the audience which we are targeting knows English and the basics of Indian religions and some amount of history of India and history of so that now we don't go into details. Why we are doing this talk as an introductory talk is primarily uh, a way of uh, level setting. Uh, I am sure that in this audience, there are scholars, there are professors, there are people who have been doing enough research and also a fairly good uh, amount of uh, freshers. The objective of this kind of an webinars is to bring the, the common people with the basic knowledge or no knowledge to come up and then absorb this concept and uh, push them to know more about these concepts and explore and uh, get into appreciating our heritage. So with this subject, the inaugural session focuses on explaining what is, what is syncretism, what are the basic religions which we are going to target, and some concepts on sculptures. And finally, the factors which are impacting syncretism in general, and some examples. Most of the talk is going to be visual and with the minimal uh, data content. Since it is, uh, since it is going to be uh, introductory, I am not going uh, very deep into any of these concepts. Uh, otherwise, uh, this will become a seminar by itself. So primarily, I'm touching up the ground level uh, to ensure that all the participants who are uh, uh, attending this have the basic fundamental knowledge on the above. So they'll be able to know what syncretism is and the basic concepts of religion and how it is affecting syncretism in religion, how the religions have transformed over a period absorbing new concepts and other things, and what is its impact on sculptures? Whenever there is a new concept, new absorption, so the design of sculptures, the pose, the, the attributes changes. In addition, there are other influencing factors. So let us see how, what are the other influencing factors which impacts the sculptures. And with this, you'll be having the, the, the fundamentals clear and it will help the next 26 speakers to talk directly into their own area of a specialized uh, subject directly without explaining what is syncretism, basics of religion and concepts of culture. So it is a level setter or a foundation so that it is, it is, it is everybody is at the same level, and you 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 build edifices, towers, and uh, temples on top of it uh, in the next 26 talks. So that is what you you should be able to do at the end of this one hour. If you are interested, you can take further reading on on this. Uh, On this subject, you can study the uh, the following books: Iconography, the reference book by Gopinath Rao, or Buddhist one T. Donaldson on the iconography and uh, the the progression of religious religion, syncretism. Uh, Professor Dr. Nilakanta Sastri's phenomenal book on development of religion in South India, and the Buffett BP book on uh, 2,500 years of Buddhism. So these kind of books will also excite your interest and explore a little more into this subject. And before we begin the talk, 
I would like to thank the following for the, the research work or content which I am going to show you. First of all, Google and our is the ultimate. Whatever we ask, it gives immediately. And I am relaying this for the most of the images and basic content and the reference material. Uh, he has got a good lieutenant, Wikipedia Pujari. So it gives nicely, you talk about any subject, it gives a content. More than the content, which may not be validated, the references and the journals which he has gives, gives enormous amount of quick uh, analysis and research and say, and validate whatever is in Wikipedia, and we, we take our own inferences on Wikipedia. And uh, I also want to thank my parent organization, Tamil Heritage Trust, uh, with whom I have been associated for the past uh, six years, and uh, I have benefited immensely. And uh, many of this uh, information or the knowledge is through uh, attending uh, the site seminars and page series and help in preparing the guidebooks. Uh, we, we tend to understand a lot of things and we tend to uh, familiarize on how to present things in a, in a different way. So thanks to uh, all for that. Now, <clears throat> let us go <clears throat> into the basics. <clears throat> the subject is in, uh, factors influencing syncretism in religious cultures. First, let us understand what is syncretism, its etymology, usage, and how it is changed over a period of time, and what is the current context. It starts from Greek, the original meaning. In Greek, it meant uh, syncretism, the federation of Cretan cities. It is from sync together and Crete, Cretans. Crete is a very uh, large island just outside Greece and which is one of the dominant islands. The, the story or the, the popular uh, thing is that there are many cities in that and then there is frequent uh, fight between the cities and then, uh, and then they are constantly at war. But when an external invasion happens, they forget uh, their differences and then pull together and fight the common enemy. So this has not changed since ages. And the latest form of this syncretism is the current uh, assembly elections, which is happening now. You could have seen syncretism in, in many forms. So many uh, political parties to, uh, joining together in, and forming friends and then fighting each other. So this is the original meaning of syncretism. Forget everything and forget the past and, uh, and then uh, unite to have a common benefit or common enemy. So there is a, the, the initial thing uh, based on one part of the etymology. And this term is used as a noun by Esasmus in his uh, Adigea, uh, yeah, where he defends syncretism. And this is a uh, list of proverbs um, which were being used in that time. There is a fairly extensive collection of proverbs that is available there. So this is how syncretism was originally meant. Later on, we came to an alternate uh, definition where the, 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 the other way of looking at syncretism is with the sun uh, and the chronomy where we say, we mix and then take the best benefit. Combining different beliefs and then blending different practices, get the best out of the breed and then bring it up. If it is good, we take it. Definitely in many situations, it doesn't happen in a positive way. Sometimes it happens in a negative way also. So around 19th century, uh, this become more popular in terms of the term become more popular and, uh, in a and uh, being used in a different connotation combination of different forms of belief and practice, fusion of one or two originally disparate or different intellectual forms. This usage of syncretism uh, is being regularly applied in religious, political, and linguistic context. And what we are going to see now is the next step of religious syncretism. 
and see how uh, the religions have evolved over a period. So this is an absorbing concepts, beliefs, external to the school to expand our survey. So it can be just to expand where we absorb and then say that, yes, I am also part of your group. Or when an external religion invades, so you also adapt and then say that uh, our religion survey, both modes is possible. So let us see, uh, there, are, there are basically three types of religious syncretism possible. There might be other variations, but I am trying to uh, put things in a fairly simple way. First, you are forcing your beliefs or concepts on an occupied or oppressed religion, and then they adapt to survive. Uh, typically, uh, during the, the, the Hellenistic period, uh, that is after Alexander the Great and, uh, the, and afterwards the Roman Empire. So they enforced their concept of Greek gods into many of the occupied things. So uh, wherever Egypt, wherever in other countries, so the local gods are always mapped to Greek and then the, uh, there was a uniform concept of um, uh, worship according to the Greek and then Greek equivalent so that uh, they were able to unify all regions uh, uh, and, and then enforce that uh, it is adopted. So this is one way of syncretism. The other can be voluntary incorporation of beliefs from an unrelated tradition or a religion for a benefit. If you see something good or something that is beneficial and you take it. So, the, the earlier concept of ISIS in Egypt and other things, many of the concepts and then this one, so uh, gets gradually transformed into Virgin Mary and then Holy Trinity. Like that, we can put so many examples. The, the same way the Greek gods and then many of this gets transformed in, into uh, other uh, religions. And the Jaina and Buddha religions, and uh, they also absorbed and then uh, coexisted in India by absorbing many of the Hindu religious and customs as well as gods. So this is another aspects of religious syncretism. The third variant is the best of the breed, where uh, a totally new uh, religion, religious uh, sector or an order comes in, which takes the best from multiple uh, religious uh, orders, the concepts, and then come up with a totally new scheme. So this has been the, the boiling color of coming up with new and new religions, new sects and other things. This is one of the popular way of expansion. Yeah, a more uh, easy and uh, visible relevance is the 16th century Dini Lagi found a backward which is agnostic religion, uh, where it doesn't have any, uh, a, a, any grantha or any idol or other things. And he has taken some of the best concepts from Hinduism and Islam and brought it up. The, the other, other major one is the Sikhism, taking best of the practices from Hinduism, Zoroastrism and all these things. And then uh, coming up with the religion, which is now the fifth or sixth largest religion in the world, and uh, has grown uh, in a fairly big way. So this is the three combinations that are possible, um, uh, where you blend uh, concepts from one religion, uh, and then this one. why we are why we are discussing this in detail is that all our sculptures and changes flow from the changes in fundamental concepts of uh, syncretism. An example is in the in the in the agra typically in a typical muslim so animal and other representation are, are normally typical typically not allowed but when when you are you are transforming to dinilagi when you see in agra there are animal motifs and other things which are also prevalent in a yeah yeah muslim like culture so this is where the syncretism comes in and then its impact on religion Now, having seen syncretism 
and understand what syncretism is and then what is the religious syncretism. To understand how this has been progressing over a period of time, let us see some of the Indian religions and how they have progressed through the past 2,500 years. So we are focusing on the three major ones, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. Primarily, this is where it has expanded beyond um, the, uh, the Indian continent. While uh, the Hinduism has not been aggressively proposed, uh, and then Jainism uh, mostly retained in India, the Buddhism has spread all over Southeast Asia, actively spread by uh, um, professing and then conversion. Whereas uh, the Hinduism has progressed uh, primarily due to trade and other uh, propagations. So let us say, uh, let us um, see what is the Hindu religious path. So, when you talk about the Hindu way of, uh, so before Vedic times and other things, people are worshipping nature and weapons. And uh, during Vedic times, the focus was primarily mantras and yagnas. And there were gods, Agni, Indra, Varuna, Surya, Prithvi, Pusan, Vishnu, Rudra. And you see that. Uh, Rudra and Vishnu come very last. They are not the primary gods. And these gods are visualized and they give yaknas and pujas and Agni takes them and then gives them to all the gods and then they give the blessing and uh, the people will get the benefit of bounty in, in uh, harvest and rains and everything. So it is a give and take kind of unfolds. Parallelly, uh, in Tamil Nadu and other areas during Sangam period, uh, they had their own set of different gods. Primarily, they were uh, split into five types of lands. Uh, uh, three natural lands, hills, coastal areas, and forests, where uh, for hill areas, Murga, or Murga was a god, and then for forest, Vishnu was a god, and for coastal areas, Varuna was the god. So this is the, the cultivated land, which is plains, where Indra, is, uh, Indra, the rain god, is the primary deity. And when it is not cultivated and when it comes into desert, uh, Kotravai, uh, desert area, Kotravai is the god. So this is the primary deities that were prevalent during this. We are uh, seeing this in the context in that the idols, farmers, how they are transforming from one period to other in, in terms of changing concepts or changing beliefs. Later come the Itihasa and Purana period where a lot of uh, the, the primary Itihasas are written. And uh, initially it started with the Panchayatana concept uh, as a smarter concept where uh, you have a set of five primary gods and then uh, you do puja at home, you do puja at temple. And the, most of the temples were having any one of the five as a primary guard, with the other four as a, uh, a secondary guard around it. So, Saivism, Vishnuism, Sakti, Ganapati, and Surya were the, the, the initial gang. And uh, later on, this expanded with uh, uh, all these groups had their own Puranas, their own. Proceed on this. And with this concept, the Kshanmada concept of Shaivism, Vaishnavism, Sakta having their own set started. Later on, there was an integration of these six uh, somewhere at a later period and uh, coming into a common Hindu uh, Sanatana Dharma or religious concept. Uh, where all the, 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 the sects were uh, united for a common uh, worship. So this led to a lot of new iconography and sculptures like Somaskanta, Harihara, Arthanarisara, 
and some of the the idols uh, getting changed in terms of character from a uh, aggressive character to a benign character or from uh, uh, the relationship change and uh, later on during 10th 14th shaiva and vaishnava uh, went into a grand expansion and bhakti marga movement was there and uh, it it triggered its own new puranas uh, shaiva puranas Uh, giving salvation to vishnu and then vishnu puranas giving salvation to saiva and it it created its own set of new iconography and finally during the 17th century in religious renaissance we come up with a different concept of viranjaneya ugra narsimha or kali or bhairava which are ferocious primarily to um, create um, uh, the war like kind of an structure that was prevalent to uh, protest against attack this is primarily a vijayanagara concept so if you see this from uh, the last 2500 years the priority of gods the sequence of gods have changed some of the gods have come some of the gods have been relegated and agni indra who were the primary gods were relegated to navagrahas like that the, the sequence have changed so during the bhakti period the itihasa ramayana and other puranas were created a lot of puranas are created shiva purana shiva 64 forms of shiva trivadal purana the plays and and events by shiva uh, this is prevalent in madurai and uh, southern area and uh, the nine mars story and bhagavad purana uh, relating to krishna leela killing of demons and avatars of vishnu so all this related to um, all this relates to a a a totally different kind of thing so it it led to an explosion of new icons and images buddhist religious progression buddhist have uh, three major forms what is the the initial form theravada which is predominantly um, uh, the initial one between 5 bc to 1 ce and it is focused on uh, nirvana for monks and and, uh, and it is traditional one relating to teachings of buddha so it is prevalent in sri lanka burma uh, thailand belt uh, cambodia belt the the key focus there is the uh, there is no Uh, symbolic worship of uh, buddha buddha as a, uh, as a, as a, as a image is not available at the time so predominantly the icons that are worshiped during the period is bodhi tree vaj- vajrasana and dharma chakra later on mahayana uh, started professing nirvana for all beings and uh, buddha is considered as one of the many buddhas and a man and uh, this concept was more comfortable and it spread it to china japan korea and singapore and uh, the the advantage of this is that you can pray for yourself and you can pray for the family and you can pray for benefit of others so it leads to lot of uh, new iconography various forms of buddha various forms of various avatars later on uh, vajrayana uh, uh, went into far more detailed analysis which is available as a tantric form in tibet nepal and bhutan and uh, with the mandala concept so it leads to many more gods many more buddhas and godlings and hierarchy of uh, many uh, new uh, icons absorbed from the local so this gives a, a, a simple chart of the various dhyana buddhas that were uh, professed with their own mudras Uh, and then directions and uh, later on they are developed concepts and then uh, later on there is a concept of dhyana bodhisattva who is uh, not a buddha but it has to go through many lives many many births and finally attains to uh, achieve uh, nirvana by becoming a buddha so this concept has got so primarily yeah, yeah bodhisattva is uh, um, linked to a uh, dhyana buddha and which we can identify by the the crown where you will be normally having a symbol uh, a mudra or uh, this one uh, 
um, the, the symbol or mudra or the actual image of the Buddha in the, in the crown part. So there are, so this is leading to yeah, yeah, a state of iconography and uh, sculptures with various facts and then mudras and then uh, various new forms. And uh, on top of it, you also have mandalas. Mandalas is a collection of uh, Dhyani Buddha and uh, both uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, series of uh, bodhisattvas and consort around it in a particular sequence. And different man mandalas are um, profound to be giving different effects. So this is how the 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 Buddha iconography and the sculptures expanded and then made into a, a fairly complex subject by itself. Now, let us see the, the third uh, component, Jaina. Jaina uh, religion uh, is almost the same time around Buddha and it starts with the Adinata and uh, in the current uh, Yuga, we have 24 Tirthankaras. Out of the 24 Tirthankaras, so there is again iconographical definitions. Uh, the initially the, the Tirthankaras were there. Later on, they had concerts, and then they had extra they were. So uh, the major major iconography is 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 prevalent for this uh, uh, the initial Adinata and the last three Neminata, Parshvanatha, and the final Mahavira. So most of the sculptures we find and iconography is related to these three. And later on, it had its own addition of Shashan uh, Devadas or protection Devadas or, or who are devotees of the Tirthankara and then or who were interacting with Tirthankara and later on, they also started getting worship. So you have a collection of Yakshas and Yaksis, female and male, and then we have a Vahanas for them and then we, now we even have Navagargas there. And uh, this is how the uh, Jaina uh, religion as well as the iconography started expanding. So now some of the popular actions are Chandraveshwara Devi for Adinata and Ambika with the, with the mango uh, as a yakshi of Neminata and Padmavati for Parsanata. Padmavati with uh, uh, fertility and other child. And uh, there are some actions like Gantakarna Veera and then Nakota Bhairava and Bhomiyoji, which is primarily a, a, a primate or, uh, or, 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 or a primatical kind of worship. So this is how the Jaina also progressed in, in a very, very simple way uh, across the time and then it absorbed uh, more uh, iconography from various uh, religions like uh, Hindu. And then it also gets, when we talk about uh, syncretism, so far we have covered, and we know now what is syncretism and uh, how the religions have progressed and what are the various changes and other uh, things. When you talk about syncretism, we cannot forget and, and it is not complete if you don't talk about Ganesha. He is the ultimate syncretist and then uh, he has done it. So before we go into the next section, the factors affecting syncretism, I would like to have a brief about Ganesha. Um, uh, having analyzed and then seen the schedule uh, uh, I don't see anything about Ganesha. Uh, the, uh, ultimately, uh, this is the ultimate uh, God who has been syncretized all along. And uh, I wanted to have a brief cover around uh, five, 10 minutes on Ganesha. So you can see Ganesha can be in any form or it can absorb all gods and then it, it can be progressed in many things. It started with uh, 1200 BCE, where we found Ganesha like uh, forms in, in, in anthropomorphic elephant figures. And uh, uh, some images are also found in Indus Valley with uh, elephant like forms. And then uh, later on, primarily why it has become so popular is 
it was also uh, many of the for many of the traders uh, it has been the primary duty and uh, this is how ganesha has uh, has traversed the entire asia and it is available and he is omnipresent in asia and and ganesha in one form or other is there in all the most of the southeast asian religions so uh, getting mentioned from rigveda where it talks about ganapati we don't know whether it is uh, referring to the actual form of ganapati or it is a, it is a title but by 5th century you got a fairly stable form of ganapati like how we are seeing it appearing and then uh, from there it is only the, the the external appearance or the number of weapons or or whether you standing or sitting that that aspects get changed so it has been getting mentioned from ages and uh, later on it become a, a separate sect uh, ganapatiyam with its own full kit of uh, purana uh, um, and then its uh, puja and other methods so by 9th century it has become one of the panchayat gods an interesting thing happened in 19th century in india where uh, uh, indians were fighting uh, british there were ban um, after sepai uh, revolution and the telugu popularized ganesh utsav as a way of meeting and then interacting and inviting people and then uh, and then uh, having large idols of uh, ganesha which turned into a paper mash utsav and and uh, now it has become a big in the corporate industry by itself with a lot of sponsoring where we get any different forms of ganesha so if you look at ganesha he is the lord of asia and he is across religions so we we see him first in a block from rajasthan western asia this may be ganesha or ganesh like forms but this kind of structure has been there for ages next we go, we, we see a, a four round ganesha in uh, afghanistan in four century we see the form and the structure standing and uh, afghanistan ganesha goddess and this is from java see the stances the structure the way he sits and some of the mudras are slightly different in terms of ornamentation in terms of stance and uh, but the basic features are the same so this way there the same god original variations he is a god with international presence with the different forms totally different forms he is a japan so see the attire the japanese dress japanese king and then uh, the japanese uh, uh, what do you say radish or mulangi or something and uh, this, this is the the japanese form in japan interestingly uh, ganesha has 30 plus forms and this is one and they have ganesha and ganeshini also and uh, mahavira uh, jain also has ganesha concept and this is taken from usian jodhpur temple and uh, his uh, role is more like kuvera where he takes care of all the wealth and other things and then with the trade connections uh, i think ganesha was also absorbed in the jain uh, where uh, lot of activities happened this is uh, a buddha kind of an, uh, panel in kandy shiv temple java where Uh, the fusion of mahabharata and ganapati and then other things in, uh, available in a blacksmith's panel there is blacksmith so you can see ganapati in the middle and then arjuna doing the blower on the left uh, and then uh, bhima doing the metal forging uh, on the right and ganapati here is in a totally different full form very very comfortable joyous no bound no dress happy so ganapati is spread across all over asia and then in different forms in different in different uh, things this is whatever i am showing is only a representative few examples 
and uh, it's very a vast subject to, to cover in, in, in detail. And Ganapati is also plastic. From paper mesh to plastic, it can be formed in many things, any design. The beauty is, if we want to see what is the latest trend in politics or this one, see the Ganapati latest forms, he is always in tune with the latest trends. From the formless or, or, or the, the uh, circle and discolor form like this, he, he, he can be in a relaxed mood, uh, enjoying an armchair, or he can be playing cricket. Interestingly, this is a, there is a temple in Chennai, uh, somewhere in 2015 or something, uh, 2000 something. Um, they started a temple during the World Cup and other things to, uh, to pray for the winning. And after that, it has been a consistent uh, crowd puller. So where Ganapati is all prevalent batsman, this is a Dhoni form. And you can identify the players here as a wicket keeper, as a bowler, or a, or a straight drive, cover drive, and then getting ready to bowl. All for starts are there. This is under regular puja. So this is total syncretism with cricket. And then he is, uh, so Ganapati is a sportsman. And he is in tune with latest developments. He is IT savvy. He checks his mails in a laptop and then he gives uh, uh, blessings through email. And he is in tune with history. And then he can be Veera Shivaji or any other popular uh, roles. And then this is how the, the after Tilak, Ganapati has made a very great transformation. And he can be uh, like uh, Rajini with all these things. Or, uh, earlier there was a movie called E uh, about uh, uh, the housefly and uh, the hero becoming a housefly. At the time, in one of the pandals, uh, uh, Ganapati was sat up a housefly. So wherever is the current popular theme, we can see that theme getting reflected in Ganapati Pantas during uh, Ganapati uh, uh, Chaturthi. So it is a very interesting uh, syncretistic tune, uh, which is very specific to Ganapati. No other uh, god has this kind of authority on that. So now COVID times, 2020 special. So he is attending to COVID patients with all this with the complete mask. Uh, only problem is he has taken the mask, otherwise we won't know whether he, he is Ganapati or not. So, Ganapati is the one uh, who is in plastic, he adapts everywhere, in tune with modern trends. Cool. So, after praying to the all prevalent God, uh, Vigneshara and Ganapati. So we are uh, going into a little more detail into the final part of the presentation, sculptures and the factors influencing syncretism in culture. So we analyze uh, based on the, the historical information uh, and uh, the efforts so far, how we have progressed across the last 2000 years and what all has been the factors which are impacting the changes in sculptures. So if you see this evolution, before going into the reasons, let us analyze how uh, our worship mode has changed over the period of uh, so many years. Earlier, uh, man initially couldn't comprehend nature, and that was his primary worship, sun, moon, and other things, which, which he couldn't comprehend, it comes and goes. So there's a natural form of worship. The moment they found weapons, this is all pervading. So whoever is become, having the weapon, he becomes a king. Okay. And, the, and then these weapons are worshipped, and then there is a, one of the primary forms. Later on, the symbols of uh, nature and God and other things started appearing in clay and easily manageable material. And they were the, the worshiping element. 
and then later on it got started into uh, wood and then uh, uh, once he got uh, um, skill in melting material and then uh, idol started appearing in metal and then in composite material uh, ivory and uh, all other things and then uh, like uh, once he, they started developing uh, construction technology using sand and mortar uh, thing so they were able to do bigger idols using composite materials and the stone sculptures uh, changed so except metals all these things are perishable and many of the things uh, we are either uh, finding it due to excavations or very rare to find but when it comes to, from the stone sculptures onwards whatever has been done has we are able to see it almost 90% as it is unless it has been intentionally damaged so this is the the, the path breaking uh, change later on now with the usage of concrete it becomes easy earlier to sculpture yeah, yeah right and we need to have a lot of support now with the steel and other thing inside in concrete you can have 10 hands 20 hands 30 hands not no problem but trying to do it in any of the other material we have enough uh, issues now even concrete has become useless now uh, we are uh, doing worship digitally during covid times temples are closed so where do you worship we worship in your laptop and then uh, even digital images have become useless and then now we are going into laser holograms so the progression from indus valley to digital valley so we we have laser holograms so this is the progression we had taken and this has changed the way we look at idols sculptures and how we visualize our gods using sculptures so let us see the factors which impact the syncretism in sculptures so when um, when there is an expansion into a new concept new religion during vedic times rudra was a small god and then uh, doing protection and he was uh, relegated to a place gradually he had the more and more role all pervading and by uh, 11th century and the, there are so many additional puranas uh, on deeds of shiva of shiva vanquishing vishnu avatars and then shiva doing this and then uh, religious integration so the forms of uh, shiva from a simple um, uh, yeah, yeah, shiva linga it has set into a grand thing so the the uh, so one of the forms is the maha sada shiva with the 20 packets this is uh, supposed to be one of the adi forms uh, and then from there it has expanded to 64 plus and other uh, varieties of shiva uh, so this gives a mind map of various forms of shiva classified by whether he is doing anugraha he is doing hunting uh, he is doing antika he is uh, uh, killing or he is giving uh, religious discourse or uh, he is dancing or in the composite forms or whether it is avatar form or it is a stiti form ligod bhava so various forms around 64 different activities the iconography has expanded adopted and over a period of time into new dimensions so this is one way affecting uh, a, a deity which is accepting new forms new roles the other way is regional variations across the region your attire weapon aspects everything is this is the various structures of uh, ganapati across southeast asia see the way very casual no dress at all no uh, very simple to a fairly simple one highly ornamented and then dancing shiva uh, kind of one design and then uh, japanese uh, model and and there are 
so many varieties. It is only an example where we are able to give very simple peek into that. The next factor is absorbing new culture. A bachelor in a regional uh, in a region becomes a family man, and they two with two wives. Okay, that, that can happen even to guards. So, a simple um, skanda uh, uh, described in a simple way in Himar and other region become complex. In North India, he is a fertility god and he is a bachelor. And then uh, he is normally wor not worshipped at, uh, at, uh, at, at a family level and then usually uh, in, a, in a remote place. Whereas in South, he is a full family man with the six heads, still to manage the two wives. And then still he is not able to do it, frequent fights. So with the two wives and complete uh, iconography in a comfortable way. So the same God across the region has got different views, different concepts and adopted separately. This is a simple The other factor is unification of sex into religion. Uh, there are many groups. In the first we saw is that um, a same God or a different roles leading to different gods or different icons. This is one way of expansion. Now this is a consolidation where you have multiple gods and then we try to bring them together into a common form and a common worship. So one example is uh, the, uh, the Hindu Shanmata uh, concept where we had six separate gods and nothing. And over a period, everybody is fighting, trying to see that my god is the big one and, and they're trying to uh, pacify and unify them. So it has uh, uh, given rise to a lot of uh, yeah, composite gods or a family kind of and panels where every, all the gods are present in one panel and worship together. So some of the examples are Adhana Vishwara, which is a combination of Shiva and Parvati, trying to say that both are equal and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the togetherness which gives uh, the world the form in which it is currently. But again, the debate continues who is left and who is right. And there is no end to it. So this is JKC uh, Adhana Risa, beautiful Adhana Risa Shiva. Harihara. So trying to reconcile between uh, Shaivas and Vaishnavas. So a concept of Harihara where the, the right is Shiva and uh, the left is Vishnu. Fortunately, there is no major fight on who is right and who is left. And most of the icons are in this way only. The third this is a family group photo. Uh, which is a which is a pan uh, concept uh, invented somewhere in uh, 7th century followers were great exponents uh, uh, my colleague and mentor gopi is going to have a detailed talk on his later um, on followers so much on the panel is an interesting um, uh, panel where uh, it unifies shiva shakti skanda three things and then Vishnu and uh, Brahma standing relegated to the background. So it is one way of representation of unification of religion. So when you unite uh, sets of religions, it, it grims uh, syncretism and the new sets of uh, ideas and uh, designs. The other one is adoption of prevalent religious concepts, where uh, you have a religion with a basic set, and then when you go, when the other religion is having 25, and then you have only two gods, you, you, you feel inferior and try to absorb more gods. And then it says, I, I also have 10 gods. I also have 25. So that happens sometimes. And then adoption of gods like in, in Jainism, in Buddhism. So the basic one in the Bhairava concept in, in Hindu has been for ages. And this is a depiction uh, of a Bhairava, the uh, form of uh, Rudra or Shiva with the dog. The same got adopted also into Buddhism. Kala Bhairava in Nepal is a very popular uh, worship in Tantra uh, Buddhism. And uh, there is also adopted in Jaina as an Akota Bhairava. And this is, uh, this is popular in Shvetampara Jain sect. So this is 
another way where your your sculptures can change uh, by adopting the same basic form and coming up with a different iconography in terms of weapons or in terms of structures and then having your own your own version of god the other factor is innovation in material so depending on what material we had we had earlier we saw the projection on how uh, uh, the way of worship has changed by the material available and the man's technological mastery over the material so uh, from a rigid and uh, plastic material uh, from a very hard uh, material to rigid material the finest the amount of details amount of jewelry the more weapons get increased we can see some examples the first one is a nadraja which is in granite by pallava uh, in cmangalam even though we can say basic but the beauty of a proportion and i think is one of the excellent nadrajas the first one in stone in tamil nadu then when you look at uh, badami Uh, chalukyas so the same nataraja now has got more hands more weapons more ultimate form uh, beautiful dance and it, they say that it is like a a, a multi exposure photo and and this is the work that is possible in sandstone and sometimes in red stone which is a little lighter and then easier to manage then comes the ultimate soapstone we can play like anything almost like uh, so and then the amount of detail and the amount of weapons and then uh, the carving we can go no limit no limit so a lot of space behind uh, the hands and other thing gaps can be easily done with much pressure no, no pressure on breaking up so it gives a different ideas different uh, thing uh, and uh, and it opens up the barrier with the new styles new iconography uh, for the same basic structure finally size signifies greater this has been the for ages from uh, ages man has got the thinking big is beautiful big is great so then so from ages they have been trying to show their gods as big by giving big ideals big thing but again that is limited by the advantage of technology and other thing and this is a grand achievement one of the tallest uh, monolithic uh, symbols of kumateshwara which was available uh, from the 19th century itself now with the technological advance and uh, uh, more uh, material available the latest tallest uh, shiva statue 143 feet made of concrete steel copper zinc and then We, the interesting part is it is on a slope of a mountain uh, like this there is a this this is 142 feet and there is a 100 feet foundation and just to ensure that it doesn't slide due to landslides and other issues so with the with the with the, the materials available your concept your concept of uh what is what we can do in sculpture changes now again expanding on the concept of big tall and white the ganesha which is who is uh, like a prav in kanad uh, i don't know whether it's a correct pronunciation so this is how he is worshiped in thailand and we, are, we we have some of the biggest uh, statues of uh, ganesha in thailand uh, near and there to near pataya we are we are familiar with pataya for different reasons but pataya is famous for spiritual salvation also and uh, and uh, this is one of the tallest ganapathis available there and this is the the largest seated ganapathi and um, uh, 160 feet and uh, largest reclining ganapati there is also there all of them are nearby and uh, around 1 hour drive from pataya so next time uh, when you visit uh, pataya for other activities 
do spend a day and have spiritual salvation visiting these temples. So, this is how uh, uh, a concept of big, tall, and wide is possible now. And then there are. I am sure every nation is in a competition to uh, come up with bigger, bigger, bigger. Next, sculpture as temples. So far, we have been uh, saying God is in the heart. Now I have a representation of uh, God as a sculpture. Now the sculpture is now becoming a temple. So examples coming up with advancement. Siddhivudayak Mandir in Gujarat. So the entire uh, rock and other things have been made into a Ganapati and the Ganapati himself is a temple. 120 feet of uh, height, 180 feet width and then the Ganesha is 56 feet and it has got a modern Santa Masala's prayer hall inside. This is uh, very near Andhapad. So next time, try this. The other concept is the popular uh, uh, beach resort uh, in Murudeshwara. Uh, it has been uh, the best religious tourism spot in India where you get everything and also some, some gods. So there is a second tallest uh, Shiva statue where you have 123 feet tall, metallic painting, glistering, and, and then it is totally hollow. This segment contains the info center museum all by itself. So, sculpture has been converted into a temple and a religious place. Now, the next thing is digital age and, Im and image. So, earlier, so we were worshipping sculptures. I will be finishing in another five minutes, ten minutes. We are, we, we are worshipping uh, uh, in temple. Now with the COVID and other things, the concept has changed. We are working from home. So what do we do? Pray from home. So if you job where uh, you do uh, for uh, auspicious uh, occasions, you see the Lord uh, in your laptop screen and you take the Aarti and you take the Buja and uh, you, you tinkle the bell and then you do Karpura Harati. Everything you do it online and that is a salvation. So there are concepts, you do puja online, and this is the next thing happening to sculptures. Your sculptures are no longer in stone. They are in electronic form. They are, they are, they are now sculptures of made out of electrons and protons. Now, the syncretism in future. The interesting thing is that Vichitra Chitta, uh, the Pallava, um, Mahendra Pallava, in 7th century, he created a cave temple for uh, the Trimurti and he, said, he proudly proclaimed that I have created a temple without wood, mortar and metal for Trimurti uh, with will withstand time. It is withstanding and the concept of cave temples and uh, structural temples in stone which were created thousand years ago are still standing. Now our guys have taken a step forward, modern Adivichitra Chitras. So they are creating sculptures even without even a stone or any solid material in digital electrons and protons. And then they have taken the next step in building laser holograms, 3D sculptures in 3D where Without anything, you are able to project in the air and give the sculptures or have the basic sculpture and then project uh, embellishment and other uh, forms and then decorations using laser so that the, the polymorphism, the same DT has got different decoration, different uh, structures depending on the time of the day or at the festival. One example is a, is a uh, Anjaniya statue, and then using uh, digital laser, they have changed the, the, the presentation, color, and then uh, this is how 
your digital uh, projection can change uh, and then uh, you can use different visualization projections and uh, alankaras and views and this is how we can convey a lot of concepts using this so this has changed the way where we were traditionally projecting uh, sculptures to convey the god his attributes his character and there are different ways of doing it using different materials now what is the future say so the objective of sinking primary uh, the, the, the the all the religions has been having the god understand the god and absorb the god in your own so your god is inside you so slowly we are going towards that the the next steps what i for see and then which is happening is direct visualization of the sculptural images in your brain by electrodes and other things you feel the god you see the god virtual reality 3d like you are uh, the, the science fiction movie total recall you don't go into travel to uh, australia you will give you a sensation that you are in australia so that is the next step where it is possible using uh, syncretism and uh, this is all will lead towards internal realization to say that the god is inside me which is ultimately the objective of all religions so with this i end